Hi, this is Scott Bacino from telecoms.com at 5G World 2016, and I'm talking to Mike Short from Telefonica. So, Mike, I gather you're a mobile industry veteran of some 30 years, is that correct? Yes, it was great joining the industry uh, in the late 80s. We used to deal with car phones then, and it yes. was mainly for voice. Clearly, it's very different today in terms of much more in the way of internet traffic that was never envisaged back then, much more in the way of messaging, and indeed the rise of video. Um, and uh, so, you know, we're at a certain point in time right now. You know, we're in the middle of the 4G era, era, but here we are talking about 5G already. Perhaps you can give us a bit of perspective as to you know, where we are right now, how maybe that compares to a similar stage in previous generations. I think there's a lot more activity at this stage before launch of 5G on standardization and on requirements. Uh, what we're seeing is new requirements of 5G quite different to previous generations where we're getting more involvement of users, particularly key markets such as transport or health, such as energy, maybe broadcasting, starting to look at how 5G will deliver so much more. I think the other key difference is that we're looking at things, not just people. So how do we connect objects such as cars or smart homes or smart cities? Yeah. And having demand drivers early on is a far better result than not having the demand drivers. Right. And we do have demand drivers, as you're just describing, yeah? The demand drivers exist today because we're doing early examples of that on 4G. So we're doing some connected healthcare in the UK today. We've got some trials at the University of Surrey running now. Uh, we're doing some connected driverless car trials this summer. Uh, this is all going to inform some of the research that we think is necessary pre-5G standards, yeah. but also will be further drivers towards making sure the standards are fit for purpose. And, um, and I understand you were, just, just before this interview, you were, you were um, delivering a talk on IoT. And IoT is obviously a massive uh, topic, as the name somewhat implies, you know, they've deliberately just gone for things. Um, uh, but you know, as we're starting to crystallize what IoT actually means in terms of um, industries that are going to use it, what they're going to use it for, what the commercial um, utilization will be. Perhaps you can just tell us a little bit more about how that's looking right now. Sure, to us, the Internet of Things actually started some time ago with what we used to call machine to machine or connected yeah. things. Yeah. The role of the Internet is quite important to think about. What role does the Internet play in the Internet of Things? What added value does it bring? Is it a cloud store for the data that you upload? Is it a provisioning engine for the things you want to deploy? Or is it simply an app store that can actually help with provisioning and other value-added services? Yeah. The internet could take different forms. So therefore, the internet of things will take different forms depending on which market you're in, whether it's for the car industry or for the healthcare industry or even some other areas of cities. Right. And just lastly, to finish off, to circle back to what we were talking about earlier for sort of context that, that you're in such a strong position to provide. So where we are right now, here we are in the middle of uh, 2016, we've got this sort of 2020 target. Um, how do you think we are with 5G versus a similar period in the build-up to 4G, let's say? I think actually the ramping up of 4G is still continuing, yeah. but I think it, when we were at a similar stage with 4G, actually it was a lot quieter the way we developed 4G. Right. Uh, it was partly because I think the requirements were not so well known, but there was a strong desire for more capacity and certainly for a much richer data world end-to-end. So the drivers for 4G were quite different. The drivers for 5G, again, different again. And in this world of Internet of Things and, and high-speed video, we need to deliver the standards first to make sure that it is cost-effective. Uh, it's not going to happen overnight. The research no. needs to be concluded, the trials need to be completed, and also the standards need to be put in place. Brilliant. OK, well, that was fascinating. Thank you very, very much for your time. So I was talking to Mike Short from Telefonica. You're watching telecoms.com TV at 5G World.